Welcome back everyone. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at Reddit. All right, so we're gonna be going through these Reddit posts and we're gonna be just picking out some questions and I'm gonna be answering them. I've been on Summoner School before and I've answered questions, but I never did it in a video format. And on top of that, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else do it. So if you guys have had your questions answered by me, congratulations. If you guys have it, maybe I'll see it if you guys put it there. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Coach Blaker. I've been professionally coaching for going on 10 years at Diamond in All Roles, Diamond 2 Peak. So when I answer these questions, hopefully you'll get as much information as possible. So the first question here is what should I be aiming for in team fights? I think this is a pretty solid question because team fights are not something we practice from game to game. The game has to go for about 35 to 40 minutes before you can actually have a 5v5 team fight. Because of that, we don't get a lot of practice. So I really do like this question. Team fight commences, got it. I have ult up, etc. Okay, there's a fed champ on the enemy team and then some easily killable champs. Fed champ may or may not die to my burst, but other champs will. I was just in a game and a Cho'Gath was fed, so I would use everything on him, but he would end up getting barely to one HP, then I would end up dying. When I could have focused damage on less fed champs and getting one or two kills, should I prioritize damage on and ult on oh wait who should i try <laughs> what <laughs> did i just not miss did i just not see who who should i prioritize damage in ult on <laughs> what was i doing uh he didn't tell me what champ he was let me see if we can read the comments and he'll answer that mm, 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 mm. doesn't look like anybody actually asked that question but how do we how, did i miss it mm, okay so the, the, they probably, oh, somebody says it right here. Yeah, no. Okay, anyway. So it depends on the champion, obviously. Um, I'm gonna assume you're playing an assassin. I'm gonna assume you're playing a mage, something that can just one shot. The fact that we said, well, I have something that can, you know, explode someone. You wanna focus on what can realistically impact a fight. The thing about things that are fed, especially Cho'Gath, is that they are more, ult reliant right cho'gath needs to have ult otherwise he's not really that even if he's fed it's not really that much of an issue as long as you dodge your skill shots that being said the adc no matter if they're behind or ahead will always do sustained damage even if it's 30 damage per second that's 30 damage per second whereas cho'gath again needs to hit his abilities and he needs to get close to you in melee range to do anything so what you would do in a situation like this is you would focus the champions that are actually going to impact the fight so the adc uh, again, I don't know what champions were, were in this game, but like maybe if there's a Soraka focus, the Soraka first and hop on the ADC. The, the thing is, if you can take out what's around the Cho'Gath, your whole entire team can focus on the Cho'Gath, right? Make this a team effort when you're dealing with tanks. It is not a 1v1 situation when you are 5v5ing. You wanna try to take out the key elements because just because he's fed with numbers, uh, gold, KDA, whatever, doesn't mean he's actually a problem. It just means he's annoying, right? So keep that in mind when you are playing against fed champions. Sometimes a fed champ doesn't actually mean that's the one that we need to focus. That just means that they're fed. Okay, hope that helped. Let's move on here. So the next question here is what to do after laning phase. I think this is a pretty solid question. This question is something that I get a lot and I'm glad it's in the first video of this series. If you guys do enjoy this type of content, make sure you thumbs up so that I know to make more. And if you guys want to be notified for more, make sure you guys subscribe. That way you are notified when I drop a new one. Um, let's get started here. Why is it downvoted though? I mean, if, if, I'm, if we go and ask some questions and get better, why, why are we downvoting folks? Maybe the paragraph isn't, does, maybe it doesn't make sense. Let's see, let's see. Hello everyone. Hi, I'm a mid lane player, Goldilo. Good. I have some questions about what to do after a late game. I'm gonna assume they don't mean late game because after late game, the Nexus explodes. So I'm, maybe it's like an auto corrector. They just accidentally put it there. When, in, when is laning phase actually over? Is it when my first tower or the enemy tower is destroyed? A laning phase is officially over? What does a laning phase actually mean? I feel very lost in the late game. Do I push? Do I group up? Every time I push, seeing there is a wave to collect or a possible tower to get, I end up getting ganked and flamed for it. What am I really supposed to do in the later parts of the game for two scenarios? If our team dominates early, mid game, and if our team is really far behind, thank you. Well, let me try to answer this question for you. So there are actually five types of phases in the game. Five, yeah, there's five. So we have early game, 
this is the landing phase. Landing phase, typically everybody's in their designated areas. Nobody's really moving around much. We're just chilling, farming, doing our thing. Junglers are pathing, what, what have you. We're, we're just chilling, right? Then you have the um, early to mid game. This is the transitioning period to mid game. So the early to mid game phase is where the first tower starts dropping, where we start seeing people, you know, start having some skirmishes and whatnot in the jungles and all that extra stuff. That is what the transition from early to mid game is. Then once we're in mid game, this is where we start having players side lane. We start having mid laners go bottom. We start having top laners go top. You know, this is where we start actually spreading out a lot more. This is where we start covering more of the map together. Then we have mid to late game, like the transitioning from mid to late game. That is where we're starting to get our items. That is where we're starting to have 4v4s. That's where we're really starting to group up and get objectives. Late game is where you have all your items. Everybody's about to have six items. We're just about to have a straight 5v5, and whoever loses the next fight probably, you know, loses the game. Those are the periods. Now, based off each elo, the game is accelerated so that it is happening a lot faster. Let's just say diamond players tend to do this way faster, whereas if you are in, I'm going to just say bronze, then it's going to be a lot slower of a process. And those that can actually manage to speed that process up actually ends up climbing faster out of bronze, out of silver, out of gold, because the players aren't used to that type of speed. So there's a little tip for you right there. If you want to start climbing faster, especially out of lower elos, play the game faster. They won't be able to keep up. The second answer here is, uh, or the second question that they asked, because the first question was, what is actual laning phase? So I hope that answered your question. The second one is, what do you do once mid-game happens? Well, it depends on what role you are. I didn't really get the information of what role you were, but you said you are pushing. So I'm going to assume you're either top or you're the mid laner. And so if you're the top laner, you're looking to flank. You're looking to flank. You're looking to cause pressure. So that way your team can do what they need to do. If you are really fed, you can just group. But for the most part, you can just sit in top and do your thing, sit in bot, do your thing, what have you. If you're the mid laner, you're going to have to be a part of a lot of these objectives more often. A lot of the times I'll see mid laners be top shoving a wave out, but dragon spawning and they don't have teleport. That's an issue because if the other mid laners there and yours is not, it's pretty impactful. Mid laners are one of the carries of the game. You have mid laners that are carries and you have ADCs that are carries. So the fact that one player that is one of my carries are not at the dragon when they need to be is huge. So if you're a mid lane player, you got to be more around the objectives more often during mid game. This one seems like a good one. Low elo support and catching waves. This is actually huge. Every support that I coach do this. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they have to say about this. Also, if you guys are interested in coaching, of course, coachblanket.com is where you want to go. I don't know if you guys know, but I've been coaching for going on 10 years. Diamond in all roles, diamond two peak. I coach all elos. So even if you're challenger, of course, I coach challengers. Even if you're bronze, of course, I coach bronze. Well, I should say iron. I keep forgetting iron is actually a thing. Not not because I feel like players are bad or anything. It's just, I just forget that they added it. Um, but yeah, check out my site, coachblicker.com. Make sure you uh, book a session if you guys are having any problems with any of this. Let's get going though. So this won't be relevant for me. Wait, what? This won't be relevant for me when slash if I manage to climb, but right now I'm ending up in a frequent situation. I'm ending up in frequent situations where mid or bot have several waves shoving into our tower and I can't get anyone to respond to pings to catch the wave. That happens quite frequently and I do understand where they're coming from. A lot of the times though, this is where we are pinging too late. The fact that we are pinging too late means that our teams don't have enough time to understand what you're trying to convey and they don't have enough time to actually act on what you're trying to convey. So as an example, if you were to ping me and I was walking myself to bot lane to catch the wave at bot tower, and you're like, oh, there's uh, towers, mid towers getting pushed. Somebody needs to catch the wave. I'm already making my way towards bottom. I'm not going to go mid. But if I were to just spawn, or if I was dead, or if I was just walking out of base and you ping it, I have a lot, I have a higher likelihood to go do what you're telling me to do. I have a higher likelihood to go move because I'm not focused on anything. And this is how humans work in general. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but we only have... Um, we only can focus on something 100% if it's the only thing that we're focusing on. If we happen to focus on multiple things, we cannot focus at 100%. So if I'm a mid laner, I'm focusing on a lot more than just catching waves, right? I'm focusing on my items, I'm focusing on my builds, I'm focusing on not getting caught out, I'm focusing on trying to get this farm that I'm going to catch right now, I'm focusing on what to do. Like there's a lot more going on in the head. So because the timing 
it just make it hard for them to, to focus. So try to get the ping timing down. Normally, if it's just one way of getting missed, I'll cry a little, but carry on playing for the vision and or, or around my team. But if there's multiple slow push waves coming in with a cannon, I'll go catch it myself just so at the very least someone gets XP and part of the gold. That makes sense. It's not too uncommon this ends up getting punished with a fight on the opposite side of the map where most slash all of my team dies. Even if that doesn't happen, it does mean I have all of this downtime where I can't make any plays or set up safely for my team to push other lanes out with vision in the jungle. Okay, so pretty much we're saying that I, I can't really do my job as a support because I'm forced to try to catch these waves. Very, very simple. Very, this thing happens a lot. You have to weigh the pros and cons. At this point, we're not weighing the pros and cons. We've got to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. If I catch this wave, does this prevent a tower from being taken? Right? A lot of the times, we'll try to catch the wave exactly what you just said for the experience and the goal. But who cares about that because you don't do anything with it? Right? I'd rather you help with whatever's going on. I'd rather you have a set up vision because that's the type of thing that'll get us to win team fights. You getting the extra 100 gold or extra 200 gold, whatever, what have you, and like a bonus 100 to 200 experience, that's not going to win a team fight. But what will win us a team fight are wards. What will win us a team fight is us setting up for things. What will win us a team fight is catching out somebody. So at this point, we have to weigh the pros and cons. This is one of those situations where, and this is why they call themselves low elo. Um, this is one of those situations where low elo players don't process that pros and cons situation. They just act on what they see. And if you want to get to higher ranks, this is a skill you're going to have to learn. And again, if you have problems applying that skill to your gameplay, coachbucket.com, I am here for you. There's something for everybody. I promise you, check out my site. Obviously, the correct answer is my ADC or at minimum, someone who isn't support should be catching these waves and my team shouldn't be making dangerous plays without teammates and outside of the vision line. But this is specifically for games where I can't control that and none of that is currently happening. I like, I like this paragraph. So there's something that lower, lower ELO players do. And when I say lower ELO, I don't mean to like bash you guys. If you guys are in low ELO, that's not what I'm saying. That's just what you guys are. You guys are the lower brackets of um, the system right now. And that goes for every single game, not just League of Legends. So lower ELO players tend to think about League of Legends like they think about esports. I, I do not know why, but every student I've coached, whether it be today or a while ago, low ELO players have like this, this fantasy in their head that teamwork makes the dream work, okay? <laughs> like everything should be cohesive. Everything should be just done all together. And we, we need the group and we need to... And so they get let down a lot. And this is what traps a lot of players in those ELOs. They're thinking about the game on a spectrum of it's a team game. That's not how solo queue works. That's the reason why a lot of high ELO players that are good in solo queue can't play on teams because they don't know how to play as a team. Solo queue is not the same environment as a team. There's sections in a game in which you play as a team, but the way that low ELO players typically think about the game as a whole is like, we have to play as a team. I'm not saying ignore your team. I'm not saying treat your teammates like bots. Far from it. But I am saying there are different points in the game where you have a team and then there are different points in the game where I'm doing my thing. And when you identify which ones you should be going in, it's going to be a breeze to climb. I promise you. What would y'all suggest I should be doing in these games? Are the lost resources too vital to give up? Or should I just be counting them as lost already and follow my team in hoping to at least turn bad plays into acceptable ones good question again i think i pretty much answered that one though and that is it's pros and cons you weigh it right what's going to happen think ahead a lot of the times the best way to play league of legends is by just thinking about what's going to happen next and adjusting yourself according if you know that a team's fight's going to break out because we see dragon spawning in 20 seconds or something like that then there's no reason for you as a support to be top this is just things that we're not paying attention to and a lot of the times the information is there for lower elo players and the way that they break out is usually once i tell them okay <laughs> once the the players actually understand like oh all that's going to be taking place in like the next 20 seconds 30 seconds oh i guess i should have been that's when they start like thinking like that that's when their process is like oh and then once they get that process down packed then they start escaping the ranks. Again, for those of you that may have questions of your own, or for those of you that have these similar questions, you guys are having a hard time applying it to the game, check out my site, coachbucket.com. There is a lesson for everybody. I highly recommend you check that out if you are trying to improve your play or reach your goals. Um, 
coaching is a valuable asset and I suggest that everyone tries it at least one time if you have not already. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. That way, you know, I know you guys like it. And then subscribe for more. That way you're notified when the next video drops of the Reddit. I don't really know what I'm going to call this. Reddit responses? I mean, what, I, don't, I don't know what to call it. But <laughs> I hope this helps. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, do what I always say. Thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach.